All right. I've been having such a great day at the event today. Um, I'd just like to say thank you to our sponsors today on the screen for supporting such a great cause. Um, everybody, don't forget that we have Career Village where we're doing resume review and mock interview as well. All right, so today's speaker is Scott and Kwa, and they're a security engineer over at Microsoft. And uh, their talk is titled, Making It Real, Turning an Attack Chain into CTF. Very exciting, the stage is yours. Thank you, Grace. Um, let's get started. Hi, everyone, and uh, welcome to our talk on turning an attack chain into a CTF. We hope this is useful to you in creating security education programs for your own organizations in a fun and practical way. So um, let's just introduce ourselves. My name is Hua. I have been on the services pen test or serpent for short, red team uh, at Microsoft for about three years. I work for my cats and dogs to have a better life. You can kind of see one of them right here. And if he uh, happens to walk on my keyboard during the presentation, I apologize in advance. Um, Scott. Hi, my name is Scott Reese. Uh, I've been at Microsoft for the last nine years and uh, been on the Serpent Red team for the last five. I spend all of my extra time and money uh, on race cars for my children. Okay, so uh, our agenda for today uh, is on the screen. I will go into briefly what is a CTF, why we made our own for our organizations, and then we'll go into kind of how we designed the attack path based on one of the real uh, scenarios that we encounter during our red team operations. Uh, we'll go into details and solutions of a few uh, challenges that really highlight the issues we wanted to showcase to our players, uh, what results and feedback we got after uh, doing the first pilot version of this uh, of the CTF with our organization, and then we can discuss what's next steps. Um, so with that, um, what is CTF? Uh, so capture the flag, or CTF for short, has been a staple in cybersecurity conferences for almost, for, for quite a while now. Um, you can find them in practically almost all of um, cybersecurity conference today. There's one uh, at Diana, Diana Initiative um, today as well. Um, so CTF is a computer security war games where uh, the player or the team competes to find the flags uh, by solving problems related to different aspects of security, like web hacking, reverse engineering, forensics, um, and extra. Um, there's really old and um, kind of historic CTFs like DEF CON and Cogate, but recently there has been more uh, kind of commercialized CTF as well, uh, such as Escalate as well. Um, there are two uh, kinds of CTF. Uh, there's um, Jeopardy, which is the most common and usually online forms. This is the format that we chose for our CTF. Um, in Jeopardy uh, format CTFs, the organizers host and create the challenges. Um, and it has many different categories. Uh, attack defense is a more traditional uh, kind of CTFs. Uh, it's usually in person. The playing teams will host the challenges and will kind of attack each other. Um, and it tends to focus on binary exploitation. Uh, full credit to this slide go to Tyler, who is a uh, kind of one of the best members of the uh, PPP CTF teams who have won CTF uh, at DEF CON for three years now, I think. Uh, and so it, the link to their, his presentations on, on the bottom, uh, it's really cool to, if you want to know more about CTF. So now I will pass on to Scott to discuss why we make our own and how we design our attack paths. Thank you, Kua. So Kua just talked about a bunch of cool existing CTFs. Um, that are out there in the market. And, and I'm sure a lot of people here at this talk have played in a bunch of those. So the first question you have to kind of ask yourself and what we asked ourselves is why would we invest the time in making our own CTF? So first, over the years, we've invested very heavily in teaching offensive security practices to the people in our organization at Microsoft. Uh, this Serpent Academy is open to all security roles from devs to PMs. Um, in a monthly session that we put on called Serpent Academy. 
This has built up a small and dedicated group of people that are specifically interested in learning more about offensive security. So we had a great pool of people already that were interested in something unique. The next thing we wanted to do was really drive home some learnings from our recent red team operations that we performed within the organization. So typically when we do a red team operation, our disclosure of attacks is reported only to the teams that are impacted uh, by that specific operation. But we realize the vulnerabilities and practices that we abuse during the engagement likely apply to more teams across the company. So therefore, we wanted to put together a CTF that was primarily demonstrably real. Uh, there's a lot of great CTFs out there, but sometimes CTFs become arbitrary puzzle-based challenges, which are great for learning, but not necessarily for locking in uh, enterprise security kind of concepts in your mind. But something that we could connect, uh, we wanted to connect the participants with their day-to-day -day jobs. Like that was our primary focus, bring it something, make the CTF something that was real to them. So when they walked away from the CTF, they could go back to their own services and see if those same vulnerabilities existed. So quite simply, we looked across our last uh, few red team engagements that we performed that also overlapped with concepts that we had already been teaching through Serpent Academy. So what's on the screen now is an actual generalized example of one of those attack chains that we performed in our organization against Azure DevOps, which ended up being the core component and the thing that we wanted to uh, highlight in our CTF. The, the real attack chain here focused on getting access to a team's Azure DevOps instance. Uh, Azure DevOps is essentially like GitHub for uh, Azure internal enterprises. And it's used primarily when using things like, uh, oh, sorry, uh, we wanted to get access to the Azure DevOps instances with permissions to edit and target a build pipeline via a single compromised user's personal access token. A personal access token uh, is a user's password, essentially, specifically for when they're interfacing with Azure DevOps using tools like Visual Studio and Git. The authentication mechanism on the back end is using a personal access token. Uh, I'll commonly switch between personal access token and PAT throughout this presentation, but that's essentially what it is. Uh, so from getting access to the first user's personal access token, we were able to leverage the permissions that user had to implement a new task, a new build task inside the build pipeline processes that injected uh, malicious code immediately prior to compilation there in number three. And from there, the continuous integration and deployment pipelines uh, in Azure DevOps uh, we're very helpful enough to automatically deploy the new version of that injected binary for us uh, after it successfully compiled. So after the release, uh, build machines and developers begin to automatically pull this new package with our injected backdoor into their work streams automatically. Uh, so one of the things that we wanted to focus on, on through red teaming and the CTF, we wanted to demonstrate that the attacker mindset is continuing to shift further to the left, getting closer and closer to the development processes and ecosystems. We can see this across the industry with uh, the MSP attacks and the SolarWinds attacks. These things are more common given their relative ease and impact than what we traditionally deal with directly attacking hardened production systems. So we demonstrated this in our red team attack. That was our primary objective. And we were able to demonstrate a compromise of over thousands of build uh, machines and developer machines. This graph here demonstrates what we refer to as the blast radius of impact that our malicious code injection attack was able to achieve. Uh, what you can see on the graph here is over the course of a few weeks as the build, uh, as the backdoor build uh, binary got ingested by our build, machines and developers, we would see pingbacks coming back from all of those workstations and we were able to track the unique counts. We, uh, we ended up compromising over 7,000 machines throughout the environments. We felt strongly that it wasn't just enough to show the organization this impact. We really wanted everyone to understand exactly how we performed the attacks. 
which systems and con uh, security controls we were taking advantage of during the operation and the impact of a build system focused compromise. So using that real attack chain, this is a look at our initial planning. To the right here is our Visio diagram showing all the components we wanted to implement. While Azure DevOps was the initial focus, we really wanted to give a full end-to-end -end red team engagement experience. So we started with an assumed breach mentality. Our participants were starting on our corporate network already with their standard accounts. This made the barrier to entry extremely cheap and easy for both the participants and us setting up the CTF challenge. The initial challenges were to perform uh, initial simple reconnaissance using systems that they were already familiar with uh, within the organization for cataloging our services. So we injected the necessary initial reconnaissance flags within the data systems that they were already used to, to point them to the three initial starting points. So this is exactly how we would operate if we were able to breach into the network. Uh, then we had three initial starting points, a vulnerable web app, an active directory domain, and the Azure DevOps organization. Um, so getting those reconnaissance flags into their system is was a really easy way for us to scope out the CTF. One of the things we were very concerned on at the start of this was accidentally having a whole bunch of people start hammering on production systems because they weren't clear on uh, what systems were in scope. So the reconnaissance flags were very easy to implement, but very, very important for us. We also had specific attack techniques that we wanted to fully demonstrate to each participant. Things like leveraging uh, ADO personal access tokens, laterally moving through an AD environment via traditional lateral movement like NTLM attacks, and compromising Azure components uh, via service principal objects, which are just uh, authentication accounts inside Azure that can talk to other resources in Azure. All of these are key components that the target audience, our participants, use on a daily basis in their systems. One of the key aspects of the CTF was that regardless of which component someone started with or what technology they were most familiar with, there needed to be multiple circular routes uh, to each other component. So for instance, if they started at web app, they would discover a reference to the ADO organization uh, and through further compromise, they would discover a password leading to our Active Directory jump boxes. Uh, we plan to support around 50 to 100 users with a low concurrency rate. We had this spread over about a month, and so we weren't really worried about uh, hundreds of people all attacking the same systems at you know within a couple hours of each other. So it was a pretty light CTF infrastructure for us. It had three core infrastructure components, just from an organizational perspective. We had two Azure subscriptions. One was hosting all of our CTF challenges objects like the Active Directory domain and the vulnerable web app. And then we separated our CTF management infrastructure into a separate uh, Azure subscription. So we had a Dockerized CTFD instance, which if you're hosting your own CTF, especially a Jeopardy style CTF, uh, I can't recommend CTFD enough. It's extremely simple, basically a push button click to deploy uh, and you have a full you know, scoreboard Jeopardy style um, infrastructure ready to go. So it's, it's really, really great. We also had an Azure, uh, Azure DevOps instance, as we've talked about multiple times now, uh, there were two repos inside that Azure DevOps instance. One was publicly available to all participants as soon as they were able to find that ADO organization. And one that was only discovered after a certain level of compromise that we'll talk about more. Uh, and there was also an insecure build and an insecure release pipeline, which again was those core objectives uh, we wanted to demonstrate for the CTF. So while we had three attack paths we wanted to focus on, unfortunately, we had some issues that we'll talk about with our web app challenges. We had some really cool challenges built into the web app challenges, but uh, there were supposed to be some components that were injected there that we just straight up forgot to implement. So the web app challenges just kind of like accidentally ended on a on a on a on a wall. And so we'll talk about that more. So starting with Azure DevOps, this is what those CTF challenges looked like overlaid on the attack path that we wanted to uh, 
represent. So over here, starting on number one, uh, I'm gonna see if I can laser pointer. So starting on number one, right, the initial reconnaissance, uh, these were simple initial reconnaissance flags that uh, they just needed to identify and basically put in the specific names of the ADO organization that we wanted to focus on. Again, this is to really make sure they know exactly what they're scoped into attacking. So from here, uh, there were two paths the participant could take. If they went down to the bottom attack path, they could start attacking build machines by injecting malicious tasks into the build pipeline, exactly as we did it on our red team engagement. This would put them down the Active Directory path via a remote code execution style of attack, which we'll cover in a few slides. But if they stayed up on the top path, these sets of challenges were focused on the various security components within Azure DevOps itself. So this second challenge here for ADO was to identify and compromise some secret variables that are often used within build and release pipelines. Uh, so through obtaining the secrets, which one of them included a personal access token, they were able to get the challenge number three, which is to uh, find a more restricted code repo, which actually housed the backend code for our web app challenge. Then they could move into number four, uh, using that personal access token again, they could get access to the release pipeline. That release pipeline then had access to a Azure service principle, which again is a an Azure credential object, basically a, a service account in Azure. And that let them do uh, an attack against Azure Key Vault using that Azure service principle uh, based on our misconfiguration of that environment to allow them to take the SPN from the release pipeline and enumerate and dump all of the secrets from Azure DevOps. So then looking over to the, the web app challenges, we again had two different routes that they could follow. The top path stayed within Azure DevOps again. Challenge number one was to identify and clone that code repo that we talked about. From there, they could scan the code and would lead them to challenge number two, which was to identify secrets in source code, which when they identified the secret and they leveraged that secret to call an Azure function app, it would return some uh, secrets from a key vault. So showing a misconfiguration of uh, permissioning between a web app and an Azure function on the back end. If they stayed on the bottom path, this was directly targeting the web app that the participants, uh, we had them start using Fiddler and Burp Suite for these challenges. So a pretty easy intro to identifying various flags within response uh, headers and cookies between number one and two. From there, they moved on to number three. We introduced an actual OWASP vulnerability for path traversal, which allowed them to download the app config file of the web application itself, which obviously uh, in most web app config files contain secrets. And then from there, they were able to do the hardest challenge. And this was a very thematic challenge. It looks out of place when we talk about complexity, but we had a whole Serpent Academy series focused on uh, OAuth token validation prior to the CTF. So we had an actual vulnerability here where they had to get access to an administratively locked down vulnerability, uh, sorry, an administratively locked down portal by tampering with their own authentication bearer tokens. This was achievable because we implemented some poor token validation logic, which is something they would have been able to immediately see if they uh, had cloned the repo earlier. Uh, finally, moving over to Active Directory focused, uh, once the users were able to get RCE from Azure DevOps from the build pipeline, they needed to kind of do traditional Active Directory enterprise-based activities like uh, dumping credentials in number one, and performing a lateral movement. So number one got them introduced to like Mimikatz. Number two got them using those uh, credentials to understand pass the hash techniques. Challenge number three then, uh, both three and four were really about identifying users within Active Directory, seeing multiple logins, uh, and then being able to traverse between different users using pass the hack techniques, ultimately to get to a more locked down server uh, in the Active Directory environment. Again, still using NTLM hash, but transitioning user accounts. So the challenge here is that you might notice every other slide had multiple attack paths. 
This one doesn't because we accidentally forgot in the web app challenges, the key vault was supposed to contain the user account password for the jump box into Active Directory so they could get to it through another path. Uh, we just straight up forgot to implement that. And so the the tack chain just kind of ended there and, and we felt kind of bad after we realized nobody was solving this challenge here. Uh, so now I'll turn it back over to Qual and she's gonna look at our challenges in more details. All right, making sure I'm on mute. Let's go into the details of making the challenges. So from the design of our attack path, we uh, broke down the 25 official challenges into four main categories, reconnaissance, Active Directory, Azure DevOps, and web app. You can see the uh, the breakdown is pretty balanced there. Um, this is also a bonus puzzle that we borrow from one of our teammates just for fun. Um, we wanted the challenges to be realistic and representative of a real world problem that we encountered in red team operations um, or even security incidents. They also needed to be fun and engaging for our players. So we designed them to be progressive where the more difficult challenges will only be revealed after the easier prerequisites are solved. In the next slides, um, I'll go over in details a select number of challenges that highlight the most pressing security issues and or highlight certain tools and techniques that we hope our players would remember after the CTF and hopefully they can be useful for you as well. So as Scott mentioned before, the reconnaissance flags are extremely important to set the scope of the CTF, similar to the scoping phase of any red team engagement so we don't just you know, accidentally attack actual prod stuff. Uh, we wanted the players to know the boundary of what is allowed. These challenges was essentially the first and the only ones the players saw when they first started. Uh, each of them will reveal their respective categories of challenges so like ADO, AD, and web app. Now I'll go into the remote code execution example. Um, one of the for uh, as one of the challenges in the Azure DevOps. Uh, flags. Um, this is a technique that helps solve at least three different challenges um, because we want because if our players leave the CTF with anything, it is exactly this that we want them to remember and think more about securing the build and release pipelines. So before we go into the details of the attack, let's do a very quick overview of the software development and release lifecycle. Um, so, you know, Azure DevOps is kind of like GitHub in a sense that it hosts a code and developers would write the code, push that code to a repo, um, then some build servers would pick that code up and start running pre-configured tasks to compile and test. Um, if all goes well, that results in uh, finished artifacts like executables and binaries um, that get released out to users or put up in prod servers. Um, what do you do with those things? So here, our target is the build pipeline in the red box, uh, specifically compromising dedicated build servers, which would allow uh, attackers to persist in any artifacts compiled in the future using those uh, those build servers. At a high level, this attack leverages permissions to access and modify an existing build pipeline in Azure DevOps and gain remote code execution on a dedicated build server. With remote code execution, other malicious actions are possible, such as downloading and installing malware, uh, exfiltrating uh, sensitive files, running mimikatz, adding malicious code to the compiled binaries before signing and releasing, uh, etc. Um, for our CTF, this attack technique is one of the main ways to get into the AD environment since the build servers are domain joined to the AD domain and the task in the build pipeline was uh, running under a user's context with admin privileges on the build server, opening up more path of attacks for our CTF players. With that, um, in Azure DevOps, the uh, player slash attacker can see on the left pane there that they can um, navigate to uh, the recently run pipelines and they see that there's one that called build attacks, pretty obvious names. Uh, so if they right click on it um, with 
like the settings uh, icon there, they can choose edit, which will uh, let them to an online co-editor uh, for the pipeline. So in Azure DevOps, you can automate build pipelines uh, by specifying the configurations in uh, YAML, which is saved as code in a Git repository, meaning you can man manipulate it just as regular code. So you can create a new Git branch, you can make your commit, you can push your commit, you can test run the pipeline um, without affecting the other legitimate branches, but your malicious build pipeline can still run on other uh, on the build servers that you want to target. So this is the change that we made to the pipeline. Uh, we add a command line test that simply prints out the contents of the flag.txt file, but you can easily imagine what other malicious thing we could do here, like, you know, uh, running Mimikatz and all that other stuff. Um, So once you trigger the pipeline to run uh, on a build machine, you will find your own um, run right there, again, on the left pane on the pipelines. And if you click on that and you go into the log section uh, under main, we can see the, the, all of the output for our command line task, which has the flag right there in the red circle uh, saying flag is nice remote code execution, huh? Um, so this challenge highlights the importance of locking down your build pipelines and code repositories to only the people who need to work on it. Ideally, build servers should be on an isolated network and wiped clean and reset after every build. But we understand that that is that could um, that might not um, applicable to everybody, and so your mileage might vary. Next, uh, I'll go into the last challenge of the Active Directory um, category. This challenge's goal is to dump out the flag on the Vault machine, which Scott mentioned is like the last, the the the, the last and the most um, difficult one to reach in the AD environment. Um, it can only be accessed from the jump box that was previously compromised. So I'm showing here kind of the WinRM um, window and title say in packet. So why those tools, you ask? Wouldn't attacker just, you know, take the credentials, RDP into the machines, make life just easy? Well, yeah, realistically, yes, but it's a light CTF. Um, RDP is not exactly stable for a large number of people. And we also wanted to introduce our players to other tools available externally in the industry. Our players are also very nice in that they follow our instructions not to change the passwords of the users since the passwords are actually flags, uh, which we really appreciate um, our players. Um, so at this point, the player slash attacker should already have this user's credentials, which they can use to create a PowerShell session under that user's context, uh, connecting to the jump box. Um, so I have put the command there. So we showcase the use of Impacket here. Uh, Impacket is a collection of Python classes for working with network protocols. You can look it up. Um, it, it's open source. Uh, we don't want people to download technically malware on their own machines. Uh, so please don't download it on your own machines, use a VM. Um, so we provided all the tools needed like Mimikatz and Impacket on the compromised machines and the player slash attacker can just use them. So with the correct syntax to invoke the Impacket uh, PS exec binary, the players gain the final flag of AD. All right, so now let's move on to web app flags. We keep uh, the challenges in this category is fairly simple. Um, the players just need to pay a little attention to the details of the network traffic. So for example, if they open just, they don't even need special tools. They just need to open developer tools that is provided with um, almost all the browsers to see the requests and responses from the web app. They'll easily find a flag in the header. They'll notice a, a little pattern going on with querying the files um, which will help them download other files on the server system, such as app settings or JSON. Um, so similarly, if they inspect the cookies, there's an interesting looking base64 encoded string in a session ID uh, containing a flag. 
but let's go into like the best and the awesome challenge in the web app tech category regarding OAuth. Um, this is a token modification attack. The point is, as a developer, please do not return true blanket in a token validation function. Uh, and so here we have an admin page that say, you are not an admin, please log in as admin to see this page. Um, and so we can open up the developer tools again and inspect the network to copy and analyze the bearer token in the request. So here is, uh, you can use any JWT decoder to decode a token uh, like on the left there, you can kind of see like a whole bunch of information. Uh, what we're interested in is the preferred username field. Uh, and we want that field to say admin at microsoft.com. So we put admin at microsoft.com there, um, re-encode the token with the rest of the information, and then pass it along in a new request to the web app uh, in Burp Suite. This tricks the web app into thinking we'll actually have a valid admin token and gives us the flag for this challenge. Flag who need token validation anyways. All right, so, you know, that, that was we planned. Here's what actually happened. Three hours in and things are on fire. Um, what we planned was for them to use the existing pipeline to dump credentials, get the personal access token, move on to the next challenges. But we started getting pings from our coworkers saying like, hey, nothing works. So we logged in to the um, Azure DevOps uh, instance of the CTF and there was hundreds of build pipelines copies just all over the place. So what we didn't plan was that people was making copies of the original pipeline. And so if you make copies, the secrets didn't go with them. It doesn't contain what they need to move on. Um, and so they complained to us like nothing worked. Uh, so we have to clean that up. And then a few people actually got through and then we realized, oh, this, there were vultures just watching the successful pipeline runs to grab the logs containing the flags and just, you know, steal the, the <laughs> and just didn't do the work to just steal the flags. And so we, we built a cool script to just automatically delete recent pipelines runs every so often. Um, and so that our build pipelines can kind of come back to a clean slate. Um, there's a lot of cool lessons learned um, in here and really fun anecdotes for, you know, the first version of, of this event. Um, here's something to be, um, to do, to pay attention to. We kind of have mentioned most of these things uh, throughout the presentation. Um, our main concerns was that people would download tools unnecessarily and trigger our corp. Uh, network security alerts and the CTF might open a backdoor into the corporate environment. So we isolated everything in Azure. Uh, we provide all the necessi necessary tools on the CTF machines and we explicitly told our players so, so they don't need to, to go out and download malware. Um, we set up conditional access so not just any random IP can access our CTF environment. Um, and we take turns being on call to troubleshoot any problems that arise, like, you know, the fires in the last slide. We also um, adopted a leave no one behind policy. So for the four weeks, uh, you know, a month duration of the CTF, we provided a weekly write-up um, that just, you know, gradually open up more and more challenges for people so they can stay engaged and they can follow along and not get too stuck uh, in, into one into any single uh, problem. Um, the overall feedback from our event was really uh, positive, which makes it which makes us very happy. Um, and we uh, and, and we're just really happy in general with how it turns out. Very encouraging for the pilot event of, uh, the, for the pilot version of this event. Uh, we plan to iterate this every year and hopefully make it better. Uh, we even have some uh, person working on the ADO team who play our ADO challenges and they enjoyed it so much. They were like, you, you know, we, we should grab some, the, you know, the other programs um, running and uh, let us run the show <laughs> with, this, with the ADO security, um, which is really encouraging and uh, fun to hear. We have some uh, some 
uh, uh, statistics here for the CTF. Uh, the top chart is the timeline of the uh, top 10 users uh, of the CTF. Um, as you can see here, kind of the um, the fastest users is like two days, um, and and he solved all of the problems. Um, uh, the bottom chart is the soft percentages per challenge um, of the main challenges. Uh, testing doesn't count and bonus <laughs> challenges doesn't count. Um, but you know, it, but you know, for the 25 challenges, uh, the main ones, um, there's at least one soft. Uh, here's some more stats. Uh, we have three people uh, working on the CTF. Um, each of us take about 10 hours building the different components of the CTF and then we kind of glue it together. Uh, we have 30, 36 registered players, which is kind of within the expected range that we, we were looking for. Um, and 35 of them completed at least one challenge, which is really fun. Um, and three players completed all 25 challenges. So what's next? Um, if you're thinking of making your own uh, CTF for your organizations, uh, here's some questions to consider. Like, uh, what is the technologies your coworkers are already familiar with and working with, uh, like source control, uh, corporate networks, firewalls, cloud infrastructures, um, and what are the security implications of those? What security incidents have your organization encountered or wanted to prepare for? Does your organization already have like theory-based cybersecurity that just needs like a hands-on component uh, with it so that to make it fun and practical? Do you have a set of tools, techniques, and procedures you want to share uh, regarding security and help your coworkers understand the security uh, implications? So for us, we really wanted to automate the process of building the CTF. Uh, we we're, were experimenting with things like Terraform and Docker to really uh, speed up the process of spinning up infrastructures and making the challenges. Um, if you're already making your enterprise CTF, please reach out and talk with us. Our Twitter handle is in the slide. We'll share it um, after our presentation um, on chat or on Twitter. Um, our team is also hiring, so please reach out to the email address there um, and send in your resume. Um, and I believe it's time for Q&A. Thank you for tuning in and uh, listen to our talk. That was really awesome. Thank you so much for presenting. Um, I only see that we have one question in the chat that Scott has answered, but maybe Kwa would like to you know, contribute her perspective on this as well. So the question is, do you find the people you train remember the skills longer uh, when they do it as part of the TCF? Um, I certainly believe so. Um, it's... Uh because these are the people we actually work with um, almost on a daily basis. Um, they, I, we can see them really apply the skills that, that they have gained um, in our day-to-day -day work. And because we design the challenges to you know, fit in with all the technologies we, we, we work with as well, um, it's, it's, it's very encouraging to see all that results coming back to us. That's really awesome. Um, I don't see any other question here unless I missed it. Um, let's give it 30 seconds so if people have questions, they can, they can send it in. Yeah, the audience really loved your talk. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for having us. A lot of fun. Yep. All right, if there's no questions, um, let's wrap it up. Thank you so much for coming and uh, I'll see you guys around. Oh, there's one more I oh. think popping up. Uh, Do you think this would work with university students? Um, okay, I'll go first. Um, I, think, I think it will be a good kind of introduction to corporate cybersecurity um, set up for university students. Um, in my experience, well, I, I graduated college like four years ago. I, I, I kind of remember what happened in college, maybe. Um, I, I, yeah, back in college, I have no idea how corporate networks are set up. 
I don't know how security was set up. We have no real world experience of how security incidents are solved or how we 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 improve the security awareness of, of the people in an organization. And so, you know, having a CTF like this um, could be a really great introduction um, for university students to have more hands-on real world um, security experience um, when they enter the workforce. So I remember that the CTF was participated by 36 people. So were these, you know, folks in security? And if so, do you guys have plans to expand it to, you know, general software engineers as well? So, yeah, so, so among our, our community of Suburban Academy participants, um, these people includes uh, software engineers and general devs who have an interest in security, but without much uh, security experience. And uh, we, we designed this so that they can kind of watch the recorded sessions that we had before to gain the necessary skills and then bring it to our CTF. And we have a whole month for the CTF to happen. And so they have all that time um, if they wanted to really dig into it and really do the skills because they, they have no, they it, it, like a month is a, a fairly good enough time um, span to, you know, not rush yourself and uh, getting frustrated if something doesn't work. Yeah, I totally understand that for like 36 hours CTF, you often get burned <laughs> out halfway and just want to sleep and eat. Mm -hmm. Scott, do you have anything to add to that? Uh, no, I, I think you hit it perfectly. I think I would love to see more like university level CTFs focus on actual replication. Uh, I've, from what I've seen, and I don't have a college background, but a lot of the CTFs that come out from the collegiate world are very kind of puzzle based crypto challenges style things, which are really cool, but they're not representative of what somebody kind of walking into cybersecurity necessarily would uh, would engage with. And that was the focus of our our CTF was let's take the day to day actual working stuff and build the CTF around it. So I would love to see universities recommend or uh, start kind of doing the more actual representative uh, CTF challenges. That's really yeah. awesome. Um, you folks mentioned a Twitter name before. Where can people find it? All right. Well, we'll post that in the comments. Awesome. Yep. Uh, and I see, yes, uh, the slides will be uh, available. Not yet sure where, Qua. I, I think Shed have the um, ability to upload files and we'll, we'll generate a PDF and upload it there. If not, well, we'll post it on our Twitters. All right. Thank you so much. If there's no more questions rolling in, um, thank you for coming and I'm excited for the next speaker. Awesome. Thank you all so much for tuning in and thanks, uh, Diana Initiative, for including us. Yep. Yeah. Thank you.